Hello, hello, hello. Hello, dear listeners, and welcome. No matter where you're tuning in from, whether it's the hustle and bustle of a sprawling city, the quiet tranquility of a rural countryside, or anywhere in between, welcome to the Pea Pod. This is a podcast about peace. I'm Terry Angel, and I'm delighted that you've chosen to spend some time with us today. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream that one day all the people of the world can look at each other and realize we are actually all the same. And in that realization, we will discover a common human dignity and compassion that will not allow us to ignore the suffering in this world any longer that we will all pull together as one and be reminded that there is more on this earth than ourselves. Each week, we explore the theme of peace from various angles, from the philosophical to the practical, from the personal to the political. We engage with thought leaders, peace activists, scholars, artists, and everyday heroes all of whom are united by a common purpose, the pursuit of peace. This is a space for stories that heal, stories that bring us together, stories that remind us of our shared humanity. Here at the Peapod, we believe peace isn't just the absence of conflict. It's the presence of justice. It's the celebration of diversity. And most importantly, It's something that begins with each one of us. So let's begin this journey together, shall we? Whether you're seeking solutions or solace, inspiration or insight, you're in the right place. We don't have all the answers, but here at the Peapod, we promise to ask the right questions. My guest today is a change maker and a genuine philosopher. He has devoted the last 20 years of his life to world peace and genuine freedom. He is passionate about social justice, and he led a group named Make Poverty History for many years. His studies have ranged across all religions and systems. Mark believes there is a way to create a peaceful revolution and new world spirit for society, which would require transformation at the heart of its soul. Mark discovered deep fissures in the system, which allowed his human rights to be violated in several ways. His goal now is to make this peaceful revolution a reality to address the escalating metacrisis arising from reality collapse as the poly crisis continues. He is endeavoring to liberate New World Spirit through teaching an intuitive kind of divine logic, universal logic. So please help me welcome Mark McCormick. A standing ovation for you, Mark. <laughs> I feel blessed. Thank you. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Peapod. I'm so glad you're here today. Me too. I really appreciate the time to expose this message and reach your wonderful audience. I hope I can do you some justice. That was a fantastic intro. Thank you so much. Um, oh, where do you want to begin on this, this journey? Oh or it's truth and peace and freedom. Yes, what a big journey it is. And I just have to say something to start out. Mark was not scheduled to be my guest this week. <laughs> you know, I work closely under the guidance of the angels. They make things happen. And I was actually supposed to have another guest on. I spent over an hour with Mark the, earlier uh, on a, a, a video meeting and he said he would be willing to come on at any time and talk about this message because it's such a huge message we need to get it out there 
And my guest that was supposed to be on with me all of a sudden was sick. I'm not saying the angels did it, but it just so happened that she was not able to come on. And Mark was so willing to just jump in here at the last minute. So, Mark, I really appreciate that. And I want everybody to just hear this message loud and clear that um, is coming forth from you. I think it's a message of hope. It's a message of there is something that can be done. And let, what, how can we make that happen? How can we proceed in a way that more people understand what our world needs today? And, you know, when we focus on the negatives, we focus on the news broadcast, what is happening, then we go down that spiral of being helpless and hopeless but you have actually gone that other direction. You've looked at it and said, what can I do? What can I do? And that I includes all of us. So each person has to ask that inside of themselves. What can I do? So let's talk about your vision, Mark. That's what I would love to, for you to share with everyone. Maybe a little of the backstory of how this vision came to be. Where to begin? <laughs> that was a great opening because right now people are able to identify the problem and that this problem, this mega crisis, this meta crisis and this poly crisis is growing. And the solutions, whether they're spiritual or the material, they aren't inspiring hope right now because it seems like we're just doing the same things we've always done or we have lost something important from the past, some kind of wisdom that we've become disconnected from. And we have a lot of spiritual people on the planet. We have about 85% of the world's population is in some ways spiritual. So then the real question becomes, why are we in such dire straits? And a lot of people don't realize how bad it is. So first of all, to understand the problem is the hard part. And then once people understand the problem, then you get into this hopelessness because there's no solutions yet that are proportional to that. And so for me, where the journey began, for the mega crisis anyway, was about two years ago. I was working uh, for this company named Uber. And Uber, as many people know, is an international uh, corporation that has taxis and food delivery and stuff like this. But the company is a lot more than that company is trying to expand with its model of profit making uh, accelerated by artificial intelligence now and we were trying to work in a social justice frame to try and end poverty by empowering workers through our own app and we found out that the algorithm that they were using no matter what you did you couldn't beat this algorithm and we tried for a couple of years me and a couple of other uh, people trying to figure out what this gig economy was about and we found out something very concerning. We found out that it was actually man making slavery, actual modern slavery in some of the wealthiest countries in the world. So this is not just poor uh, countries or developing countries. It is everywhere. And we became very concerned that not only was it you know, creating slavery with us, it was also getting into our policies and reversing the protections that people risk their lives for. People risk their lives to get minimum wage. They risk these basic human rights. And, you know, in terms of religion, they were spiritual rights at one point in time. You know, Jesus came and said, you know, the, his main principle was, you know, everybody is free. Everybody, it doesn't matter where you're born, who you were born to. None of these sensuous things matter. What matters is that you're in this spirit and the spirit in you and that you are allowed to actualize that to your highest capacity. But we are losing that principle now. And, you know, even Buddha had that, the Bodhisattva vow was to dedicate your life to liberating all sentient creatures. Every great teacher had a principle like this, and it actualized to different degrees, but it seems like we're regressing now. Even in law, even in our time, even in like normal secular society, we are regressing. And this is what got us into high gear about accelerating our activism to start addressing this and looking for that solution. And it came... It finally came. Luckily, that's what I want to say on this podcast is if you're feeling hopeless, there is a solution. 
and I only have 23% battery left on this phone and I don't know where the charger is, so I'll try and squeeze it in into 22% of the battery. Um, I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to have to squeeze it in here because I thought I had the cable on me. But this is what happens when, you, when you're when you squeezing as much in as you can because I think as many people as possible knowing about the solution can get us back aligned with the spirit, this genuine, absolute kind of spirit that I think we lost touch with. And so we started looking, me and 700 uh, mostly images Immigrants actually here in Canada because uber exploits the marginalized the people who don't have as much power and We were down there trying to help them unionize at first, but a lot of the drivers told me they said, you know The unions don't work anymore There's a, an erosion that's been happening for about 40 years since 1981 roughly where production has skyrocketed but real wages adjusted for inflation what you can really buy with your dollar has stayed exactly the same for 40 straight years, which means that compared to how much we're producing, we're getting poor, like vastly poor, which is why everybody's struggling and working so hard just to stay afloat. And we think that the solution is a spiritual one, which reverses that trend in a certain way. And it requires understanding who you are and acting in a new attitude. There's a new kind of thinking that has to happen that is the same as your being. And in terms of spiritual language, it's like thinking from your soul. Soulful thinking gets you into spiritual thinking because spirit is the thinking side of the, the beingness of the soul. But how does this help us solve, you know, this meta crisis, poly crisis? How does this give hope? It's because most of human history, this divine way of things has been in religious consciousness or in artistic consciousness. And these are mixed in two ways. The first one is mostly what's called sensuousness. And the second is what's called a mixture between sensuousness and super sensuousness. The way of things is actually hidden in the sense data, the sens the sensuous world where you can get confused on which one is which. So if you focus on the sensuous and treat it like it's the essence of things, the truth of things, then you can end up backwards and that famous saying, you know, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. That's what happens to you. You do the opposite of what you mean to do. And so we're correcting this and we're saying, well, actually, if we clarify this spiritual thinking into its pure super sensuous form, the inner world, right? In the, in, in, the, in the material world, you can't see it. It's not a taste, touch, smell. It's in the way of all those things. It's a universal. If you can get in touch with that, then you can align yourself more. And so this is a very fancy way of saying that this universal logic is this way of things that we have figured out how to teach in not just the artistic form, not only the religious form, but now we can teach it in terms of scientific form that our generations today can understand, our political leaders can understand, and we can start getting them aligned with this sort of divine truth, this eternal way of things, and be able to communicate that in a more shared way. And so these uber drivers and, and myself we ended up creating this organization that wasn't just a union it was actually a an organization we called new world spirit that created our own version of uber but aligned with this universal kind of logic it guided every of this new kind of society that we were trying to create this new global kind of society that would sort of compete with uber and perform a nation a sort of love that enemy a mentality love thy neighbor as thyself love thy enemy to you in all things it's agape and so the new world spirit at its core is this, this L of sharing the spirit in those three modes third mode is the one that i think has been missing and we divided this up into 200 nine categories that they're already in you but they're mixed up they're in the wrong order they're not in the right so the, the solution to this mega crisis, whether it's cooperation, nobody trusts each other anymore, whether it's artificial intelligence taking all of our jobs, and then also we don't know how it could destroy us in a way. I mean, this CRISPR, you know, it wanted me because we figured out how to change anything in our DNA. We can cure all human diseases, but if it becomes owned by the large pharmaceutical 
pharmaceutical companies, then it will be used not to heal us as sacred entities, as sacred beings, but it will be used for this external profit maximization that is destroying us. The third crisis is we have three global wars happening right now, and nobody knows they're accelerating. They're not getting better. They're not negotiating. They're not trusting each other. In, in Gaza right now, South Africa is suing Israel for genocide. Mm -hmm. And then we have climate change on top of all this, where we're hitting, hitting tipping points in the next couple of And there's a lot of division between, you know, is it man-made or is it not man-made? A lot of people now recognize that something is happening. Some causing this to happen. And we need to do something about it. And the last crisis here is, is health, where we're all feeling very connected through social media, you know, Facebook, but we feel lonely. There's a loneliness crisis happening in the inner world. So how do you solve that? Well, that's, we need an internal connection. And we feel like we have that in a chill way. This universal logic is an intuitive kind of bridge of contradictions that are ripping us apart. So one of the ones is between thinking and being, right? Thinking and intuition, thinking and feeling. Those are usually treated as opposites but in truth in real spiritual thinking they're both happening simultaneously if you align with the right way of things when you think with the spirit it is intuitive it happens spontaneously from your soul but it happens in a way that you, as yourself and you can align your conscious will with it's a conscious activity it's not just something that you, you, you can only channel so whether you want to be a channeler or you can be a conscious medium in the scientific form where you can influence atheists or secular or scientific enterprises or universities if we found a way to get them to take spiritual knowledge seriously now and we can cause a paradigm shift in all of our universities in all of our schools in all of our institutions of political will we can cause a paradigm shift that reorientates around this wisdom knowledge not just random knowledge or particular knowledge so universal logic is a way to teach wisdom by overcoming 200 fragmentations, 200 divisions, 200 externalities or separation, 200 polarities, 200 contradictions. All these words, which are the opposite of oneness, which is what spirit is. We figured out how to solve 200 of those. That's why we're so lost right now, even our spiritual leaders. There's 200 of these. That's a lot. And they're, they're yeah. tangled right now, very, very tangled. So we've come with this incredible new direction of unity and weakness that we think if we get people taking these these disowned parts of themselves these others and integrating them owning your disowned self we can heal 200 points of pain in all human these are universals they're everywhere and we can bring people back into this to this sense of oneness in our being and in our spirit in a very because it's shared we can do hundred oneness and so this is happened before human history and I think uh, <laughs> with 13% I wonder if I should uh, get your thoughts on this um, Terry because you've been in this for a long time and a lot of people wonder well how does this you know result in world peace and how does this result in freedom there's a way it's it's all, all the same it's all the same ones if you align with that so that's the solution, and we're very excited about that. And if it resonates with you, and you're in your intuition, then that might be spirit calling out to you. It's tapping you on the shoulder and saying, the "New world spirit needs to emerge, and it needs to emerge now, in the present, in the here and now, because we need it uh, in uh, the next six months to two years." <laughs> so it's, it's a really great frame. Uh, but I hope that inspires a few uh, of our intuitive uh, uh, types out there. Maybe our Psychics are universal types. Uh, I feel like, uh, Terry, that you surround yourself with, have that spiritual gravity. So hope reaches a few hearts and, uh, and brings out that. Yeah. <laughs> that was the short version. Like I said, um, Mark and I spoke for quite a while recently as he shared with me his vision and uh, how he sees things progressing. And at the end of it all, I, I'm all in. Whatever I can do, whatever I can participate and make this, make this happen. You know, 
I really believe that philosophers and intuitives, the, the spirit beings in the world, are are shown these things for a reason. I know they are. And so this was brought forth for us to look at, for us to embrace. And I'm embracing it fully. So I'm really hoping that you that are listening in today are taking this all in. And how's it feeling inside of you right now? You know, that's that's the test. How does it feel inside? You know, you, you mentioned, um, is it resonating? Are you in alignment with looking at solutions instead of just, you know, we have all this stuff going on. We can't deny. We have wars. We have global, uh, climate change. We have people that are just feeling so lost and alone and just losing hope right now, losing hope in even being able to be here tomorrow. You know, is the world going to end because of all of the things that are happening? So there are solutions. And that's why I wanted Mark on here so bad to really explain to us, we don't have to go down that rabbit hole of the sky is falling. We can look and say, oh, what can I do? You know, I used to think it didn't matter what I did. I was one person, right? It was only me. What does it matter if I just bury my head in the sand or, you know, if, if I contribute in a negative manner? And I found out really quickly that everything that we do, everything we say, everything we think does matter because it goes into that oneness. It goes into the collective energy. So Mark has started this train moving. And let's jump on board. Let's let Mark know how you feel. If you would be willing to spread the word even, that's helping. That's helping with the solution instead of just sitting by the way and, and say, oh, somebody will do it, right? Here's Mark. He'll do it. And so we all have to get together in this. This isn't a one-person job. Our world didn't get into this mess, the kind of mess it's in overnight. It's not going to be straightened up overnight. So it's going to take some work. It's going to take some meetings of the minds. It's going to take some effort on all our parts to do something. So I'm hoping by sharing this out and just letting everybody know that we are looking at solutions that you're going to feel motivated and inspired and ask the question, what can I do? How can I help? And Mark, I, I am really fully believing there's going to be people that want to help. I, I see it in the interactions I have with others that there's a desire to have peace in our world. And as I said in my introduction, it's not just about ending conflicts. It's not just about, um, you know, a utopian world where nobody's fighting or disagreeing with each other. It's that harmony, that sense of unity. It's seeing a problem like poverty and saying, I, I choose to do something. And Mark, I know uh, from talking with you that you have done hunger strikes and you're doing more of those, right? You have some upcoming uh, to let, let people know that, you know, this just isn't right. There's, there's something that we can bring more attention to things that are going wrong and that, um, that we can do something. Uh, one of our listeners says, parts of this were difficult for me to hear. Does he have anything written that he can share? Yes, we do. We are actually launching 64 wisdom teams where we're finding ways to teach this universal logic where we can meet people where they are. And there's a translation prone in humanity. So we are answering that translation. We're saying everybody is different, but we're all in the same essence. You have a oneness, but you also have infinite diversity. The question of who you really are as a unusual. And so we found a way to reach people in the kind of language they need to hear the universal, universal logic in. Because the universal logic is in all languages, it's in all cultures, in all times, in all places. And what's profound about it is once 
spiritually in tune people hear this way of the words, it explains what we've always known in ourselves, that feeling of knowing, of being connected, if you're born with that gift. This is a way to explain it to them in a way that they can finally get it if they don't have it innately born or expressed. Everybody has it in them, but it expressed is sort of a gift. And so now when we speak with this way of the words in the language that people can understand, then it allows them to take ownership of that and know who they are and explain it to other people in a much clearer way. So we do have 137 documents, but there's probably one that might resonate with you if you're listening to this. It's very specific if you're a Hindu or if you're Buddhist or if you're Christian or if you're Platonist or the, the universal logic is the essence in all of those. And we found a way to line them up. So if you're religious, it's an interfaith. It's not just a multi-faith anymore. There is that oneness that we can speak about. So I will definitely send that off to you, Terry, and anywhere that we need to send it to, we will get in touch with you. If you're interested in joining these uh, 64 Wisdom teams, we are taking a comprehensive approach to reorientating all of society at every level from the medical to the political to the spiritual and even the scientific and philosophical so no you are what kind of history you've had you belong no one gets left behind we bring everybody into this oneness and we move together so you're right terry we can't do it alone if you're feeling called and you don't know what to do then take the first steps we'll start sharing this universal logic with you and then if it starts resonating with your spirit, it'll start to happen naturally. And I feel like uh, this is a beautiful place, one of the most beautiful places to start. Because Terry, I think you are attracting those wonderful individuals that are looking. And we are here to meet you there <laughs> and, yeah. and help you in any way we can uh, move together as one. Absolutely. Uh, Mark, there's something that's beginning on March 7th, the uh, World Congress for World Peace and Freedom. Uh, is that something that you are involved in? I would love to be involved. We're involved in a lot of places. The word is just getting out now, but there's a lot of communities that need to know. So yes, if we should be involved with that, then we will then go and start spreading this because it is like a universal diplomacy. It transforms the nature of everything from the, the dead way, mm -hmm. the dead bones of spirit, into this living, this whole emerging of life. And this is what we need to do is go in and reinvigorate, rejuvenate those processes before they get ossified. So yes, I'm very interested in going to any of these places of peace and say, are you aligned with this? And there's a way to check. And if they are, great. That we will promote that methodology. And if they're not, we'll just say that's okay. There's a way to correct it now. And that's what we need to do right away. And if you don't feel like going on hunger strikes, that's okay. I'm going on these hunger strikes. You mentioned it very briefly, Terry. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, we're trying to show solidarity with the, the poor. There's 700 million going to bed hungry tonight. If you don't want to do the thinking, embodied solidarity, there's that component as well to really accelerate the actions support. Um, so I have 2% battery left, but there's a lot of actions we can take. And if you guys have communities that can resonate with this, send them on and we will do something called sublation. We're going to integrate them in the essence of the movement of wisdom itself. And that's what we need to do uh, uh, with as many heart, minds, and souls as possible. So yes, ask your questions, uh, can, and we will try and meet you where you are and love you as much as we can. Uh, that's what we need at the heart of things. Universal logic creates love as a recognition of ourselves in the other, the highest expression of who we are. Oh, absolutely. So, yes, any of you that uh, feel the call, and I saw several of you mentioning that this is something that you want to get on that train, and what can you do? So, yeah, definitely reach out. It might out. be more of a roller coaster. <laughs> it may be a roller coaster. You're right. And I, I get kind of seasick on roller coasters, so I may have to stay on the train. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever it is, we we'll are going out. forward. Um, I'm joining in with Mark on this effort, and we'd love to have more people involved in, in this process. So, Mark, I know your battery's going, and I just want to say thank you for coming on today. You'll be back. Mark will definitely be back. We're going to uh, try to get a panel together. Uh, Heidi Little is very involved in this as well. She's the one that connected me to Mark. 
So hopefully we can get a panel discussion going and see more of where this is headed. So, Mark, thank you. Thank you so much for coming in today and introducing this. And I'm, I know we're going to be having more and more discussions about it and uh, bring it more out into the world and, and gather the troops. You know, that's, that's what's needed right now. Oh, Mark is a P for P, Santi Jean. <laughs> yes, I have brought him into the pea pod, so he is definitely a P for peace. Yeah, that's our, our beautiful movement of bringing more peace into the world and following the journey of the pea pod tour. So, Mark, you have been inducted into the pea pod. Okay, and I know that Mark's phone is going, and I just want to, um, yeah, I just want to let you go before it totally goes dead. You can go get it on a charger. So thank you. Thank you, Mark, for being with us today. Yeah, I think, I think he's gone. <laughs> and I want to welcome everybody that was here for that. I know the sound was a little bit difficult because his battery was almost gone on his phone. But I just, uh, like I said, I spent over an hour talking to this man on the phone. First time I've ever had an interaction with him. And it was just so beautiful to hear the things that are taking place in the world. You know, I've been at this for over three years like three and a half years, actually, and out there, boots on the ground, talking to people about peace. What does peace mean to you? How can we have more peace? What What are we talking about when we're talking about peace? And as Mark and I both have mentioned, it's, it's not just let's stop fighting. It's how do we create a world that works for all of us not just one, not for a select few. How do we make that happen? And it is a choice. We all make choices every day. And when we learn about efforts, then we can choose. Do I want to get behind that effort? Whether that means that I'm going to tell others about it, I'm going to do what I can, like use my voice, use my my physicality, um, maybe sharing with others what, it's, what it means to be involved. Or maybe it's financial support. Mark hasn't asked for any financial support. Right now we're just gathering the troops. Right now we're seeing what we are doing. But how does that look to you to get more involved? And as we give out more and more information about this, which I will be sharing a lot more of it as I get all the scoop and know all the details, there's meetings that will take place and there's information coming forward and there's probably going to be some classes held to explain how we see this progressing and coming forth in the world so that it can be on the large scale of helping people understand peace more fully and that um, it, it's, there's a lot to it. You know, that becoming kind and gentle to each other, it's a decision we make, but it's also how we live our lives. It's a change in lifestyle for a lot of people to be more consciously aware of how we're treating others, to really have a desire to end conflicts, to end the um, all the uprisings about one thing or another, about all of the, uh, the discord and the disharmony and moving into a world where we're not afraid to walk down the street, where we know that we can talk to our neighbors and smile at them and be gentle and be nice in the world. And yes, there's always going to be something. There's always going to be something of the contrast. But what we focus on expands. And for so many, many, many years, way too many years, the focus has been on what's going wrong, what's wrong with our world. And there hasn't been a solution offered. There has, there's only been, these are the facts, and it's been coming out in this big 
dramatic way because that's what sells. Drama sells. And so we want to offer solutions instead of just saying, okay, there's a war going on. Now what can we do? What's the solution to that? So there's many organizations that are out there constantly looking at what what do we do? How do we um, proceed in a way that's going to work, that's going to be beneficial? And we have another troll, Anjali. Uh, no, 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 we do not do that here. So let me block that person. Sorry, Jean, <laughs> they focused in on you. Um, and Alice, welcome to you. So yes, the subject today is peace. This is the, the Pea Pod podcast, which is all about peace. And Linda says, we are ripples in a pond. Every act of kindness lets someone know they are not invisible. Someone cares. That's so very true, Linda. And right now, there are so many people that are feeling lost and alone, that feel like they don't have any hope, that this world doesn't have any hope. If you talk to 10 people right now out in the world, and I talk to people every day, a handful of those are going to say there's no future, that we're done, that this world is done. And they've given up. They've given up hope that we can have a future, we can have a, a world that is peaceful and kind and that we can enjoy. But I believe, in my heart, I believe there are solutions. And I know what Mark is bringing forward is one of those solutions. It's, it's talking. It's getting our minds together. Mark is an amazing philosopher. He has put a lot of work and effort into looking at solutions. So I think the dog's barking is probably my cue to exit left <laughs> and let you all um, soak in what was discussed today and what was brought forth. And if you have any comments, any questions, I will gladly pass those along. In, there's going to be meetings that are happening, meetings of the minds, and I will be in close touch with Mark and with Heidi. I'll try to get Heidi on here soon. And let's just work together for solutions instead of being separated by what we perceive to be problems in our world and looking at those as our main focus. Let's focus now on what we can do. And that's my goal. That's, um, that's been my goal for years, is how do we bring more peace in? So looking at solutions, looking at how we can not just sit on the wayside and wait for somebody to do it. And those peace activists that have picked up the placards and said, I'm all in, peace is now, I want peace, I honored them. I'm grateful to them because they have showed us the way. They've showed us that we don't have to be have to be silent, that we can speak our heart and let love reign, let peace fill our world. Sire, uh, beginning tomorrow, I will be in a training program to be an international peace ambassador. Very excited about this, because find solutions. How do we look at there's something going on and I want to do something about it, denouncing it in a dramatic way. So thank you for being at the Peapod today. Thank you for your love, for your always your support in this piece of going on magic tour that has been traveling around the country back and forth and up and down and bringing in energy of love into our country so that peace can be more fully there and then spreading that out into the world. So thank you for being here. I love you so much, my beautiful peas for peace. And next week, we'll be back.
I have a beautiful guest coming on next week. Every the the Peapod it, the lineup is full until the end of February, and I know these are going to be people that you want to hear from because it's it's all centered around peace and finding inner peace for outer peace. So bless you all. Stay in your hearts. Stay blessed, and I love you. Namaste, y'all. I will see you next week on the Peapod. Bye, everyone.